Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Bowling with the FEF, a platform for you to share your unique bowling story live on our YouTube channel, uh, coming to you from the out of doors uh, for the first time. I'd always wanted to try to do one of these shows outside, uh, always ran into some crummy weather or other uh, roadblocks that kept me from doing it. But uh, right now, it's beautiful in western Wisconsin. It's about 72 degrees. And uh, those of you who have been to Wisconsin or live in Wisconsin know that we get these conditions for about, I don't know, a week out of the year. So I figured this was a good time to uh, take advantage and have this show outside uh, for the first time. Now, there will not be a show next week, and here's why. Uh, coming up uh, is the PWBA Twin Cities Open on uh, March 20, or May, rather, 27th through the 29th. It's at Cedarvale Lanes, Egan, Minnesota, and uh, I will be out there uh, creating content uh, for the show, and uh, figured I'd give myself a little extra time uh, just so we can... Uh, Get everything straight, get out there, uh, talk to uh, some of the pros, and uh, see some of the greatest bowling action in the world, really. So again, Cedarvale Lanes, Egan, Minnesota, Bowling with the FEF at the PWBA Twin Cities Open. I am certainly looking forward to it. Hope uh, all of you are as well. And uh, please let me know what you think uh, of the content as we get through that event. I know uh, when I was at the World Series of Bowling, the World Championships, a lot of people seem to enjoy that. So hopefully uh, we can get a similar response out of this one. Of course, uh, the last week had uh, a lot of bowling action. We saw Kyle Troop uh, come through, win the PBA playoffs for the second time in a row. Uh, then later on Sunday, we saw Stephanie Johnson uh, take the first PWBA event of 2022, the Rockford Open, in dramatic fashion. So congratulations to both of them. And uh, now the PBA uh, is going to be, um, I guess, off TV for about a month or so. Uh, and uh, the focus shifts to the PWA as we PWBA, as we were talking about, and the PBA 50. So still lots of bowling action uh, to check out on television and beyond. And uh, certainly looking forward to seeing that. Now, a big reason that uh, I am able to do what I do with this show is Chip Magnet Salsa. Chip Magnet is a local company here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, a family business distributing salsas, relishes, and more to 38 states and Canada. Uh, those of you in St. Louis, Missouri, you can find Chip Magnet at Whole Foods or uh, from anywhere on earth. Uh, let your fingers do the walking. Go to chipmagnetsalsa.com to order yours today, Chip Magnet raise your snack standards. So today uh, we have a guest uh, from the PWBA. I was uh, hoping to get somebody with a, uh, we'll say with a Minnesota connection. And uh, since the tournament is coming up in Minnesota, uh, but it's kind of strange timing because there's another tournament, the USBC Queens uh, coming up in between here and there. Uh, so I am happy to bring on Lauren Pate, uh, who is from Baldwin, Missouri, which is a suburb of St. Louis. She's got roots in Minnesota, uh, a PWBA member, national champion twice over with McKendree University. Lauren, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Today, I noticed on your Facebook page that uh, you were out practicing, getting ready for your first PWBA tournament of the season. Um, tell us how it went. Um, today was a little better than yesterday. Um, I took the weekend off due to graduating. Um, so it was good to get back into it yesterday. I think I practiced for like three and a half hours yesterday. So it felt really good to kind of throw bowling balls consistently. Um, today was really well, just kind of really toning in on those physical game aspects, but everything's falling into place. So I'm pretty excited to get out there. Yeah. When you are out there right before a tournament, is there any, I guess, threshold where you got to kind of get into a sweet spot between not practicing enough, but not practicing too much? Yeah, um, I definitely think so. This past couple months, I've been experiencing some knee pain and hip pain. So I've been going to my chiropractor. So I've really kind of been working on strength, strengthening my hip muscles down all the way to my knee so I can um, have the endurance to bowl 
basically the entire week um, without having any pain or little to no pain at all. Um, it's a process. Some days hurt more than others, but um, working through that and strengthening those muscles definitely has helped. Um, I am a firm believer that work is put in no matter if you're on the lanes or if you're off the lanes. Um, obviously, I just graduated with my master's degree in mental health counseling, so I'm kind of more leaning towards mental game. I think you have a, if you have a strong mental game, um, you're going to perform well, regardless if you practice. So my practice looked completely different than um, some of the other professional athletes, which is totally okay. Um, at first, I was not okay with that, and I needed to be bowling all the time, but I quickly realized that bowling isn't just throwing bowling balls. It's also taking care of your mental health and training um, off the lanes. So my training was more mentally rather than um, physically. So mentally, I feel like I'm in a great position to go on to the tour. Um, I really have nothing on my mind to worry about. I don't have school anymore. Um, I'm not working until the end of June. So I have pretty much a clear mind um, and I'm very determined to do well this summer. Yeah. Is the plan right now just to go to all of the events or are, or do you pick and choose? Um, I'm going to all of the events all the way through the Dallas Classic um, series in Dallas, obviously. Um, obviously, I missed the first week, which is OK with me. Um, but, yeah, I will be at every everything else. Yeah, great. Um, now, despite the fact that you weren't competing in Rockford, um, uh, by the looks of your social media, you could tell that you were there, uh, you know, in the crowd. So, uh, you know, I was talking to uh, Sean Walkner about this. Mm -hmm. He was there too. Um, he said that you two, you and Matt, um, who is a phenom in his own right, drove up to Rockford yesterday to watch Shannon and uh, your former teammate, Brianna Clemmer, compete. Uh, so, you know, truly a passionate and committed friend, he says. Uh, you know, now, the other thing is you guys recently got back from Mexico. So mm -hmm. you get back from Mexico, you drive what five hours up to Rockford, five hours back. You'll be going another five hours to the Chicago land area tomorrow. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he says that says a lot about your character to, you know, to make a 10 hour round trip for two hours of TV. Were you kind of like on the fence about whether you'd do that or not? No. Um, Brianna Clemmer bowled phenomenal all weekend. Um, and there was a time, obviously in October, her and I won doubles gold in Columbia. And I think since then, Bri and I have this connection that is unmatchable um, in any relationship that I have. Um, she's grown to be like a really close sister to me. So when I saw she was bowling well, and I was like, all right, girl, you make that show and I'm driving up. It's only like four hours. I'll make it there in three and a half. Um, <laughs> and she said, okay, deal. And so every block she would text me, she goes, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. When are you coming up here? And I was like, all right, I'll be up there tomorrow by three o'clock. And so um, just being there, I think really helped me be like, okay, I'm ready for this. I'm watching history happen. And I think it was just like a calm sense come to me when I walked into the Cherry Bowl because it is the home of the PWBA and um, it means a lot to the PWBA and just being able to watch like Stephanie win, um, I think is outstanding. I roomed with her uh, recently at Team USA camp and so I've gotten to know Stephanie a little um, closer than before and just watching her win, I think... Um, it gave me like a sense of motivation that, you know, it's the, it's always trusting the process that it took Stephanie four years to win another tour title. And we didn't see her give up. We didn't see her um, stop bowling. Um, she was still working hard and just proves that she's one of the best out there. And I think watching that gave me motivation to be like, all right, if she can do it, I can do it. And just, really kind of pushed me to, you know, practice a little harder um, yesterday and today because, you know, it's the real deal out there. It's, it's not league anymore. It's you're going out there and you're competing against literally the best in the world. And 
I'm grateful that I get to do that and um, have some amazing friends out there too that can experience the wins and losses with me. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. And um, thank you, Sean, for the kind words. <laughs> <laughs> he's great, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he's wonderful. Yeah, Nico's in our chat saying good evening. Thanks for joining us uh, tonight, Nico. Um, I got to ask, you know, it, you're you know, your focus, I'm sure right now is on the USBC Queens. It's right in front of you. Um, mm -hmm. But after that is the event that's really, you know, special to me and I'm sure special to you, the PWBA mm -hmm. Twin Cities Open um, at uh, at Cedarvale. Tell me about, uh, you know, making the trip to that event. Have you bowled in it before? Uh, I mean, is that event special to you because it's your hometown? Yeah, um, it's very special to me because we don't really get a lot of women's bowling in Minnesota. And m since I've moved away from Minnesota um, consistently now for three years, um, it feels good to kind of go back to, you know, where I grew up and surround myself with the people I grew up with. Brent, the owner of Cedarville, is a wonderful human being. Um, he's probably known me since I was in my mom's stomach. Um, <laughs> So there's a lot of history there. And I think I just like going to Minnesota because I don't have to stay there all the time. And like, I get to come home to my own house and do my own thing, even though my parents are probably watching and they're probably upset that I'm saying this, um, <laughs> especially my dad, because I know he wants me to move back. Yeah. Um, but it's just nice because, you know, that's where I grew up and it's, it brings back a lot of memories. Um, happy, sad memories. Um, I love Minnesota, but I also love the St. Louis area. And, you know, this is where my life is now. So just being able to have like two homes, I think um, it makes me happy. And I'm really excited to go back to Minnesota because Cedarville's an awesome place. They have an awesome pub or restaurant. Um, their food is phenomenal. Their staff are lovely people. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be a great event. I'm happy to go back there. I was there, I think, last year um, and was hoping that it would be late enough in the year where I didn't have to miss this stop due to graduation. Yeah. Um, but I may have made a little wee wave if it did happen to fall on the first stop. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited to go back and just see my family and just have my family behind me at this tour stop. Um, and hopefully I can perform and <laughs> do well. Yeah. Absolutely. So obviously you don't start competing on the PWBA tour or even, uh, you know, at a, uh, you know, at a legacy bowling college without getting your start and mm -hmm. kind of going up through the ranks. So let's talk a little about your bowling story. When and how did you get started in this great sport? Um, from what I know, my parents, well, from my mom, she said, we just put you in Saturday morning league. And then you just fell in love with it. So there were not a too much info on the background. Um, but I do remember bowling Saturday morning league. I loved it. Um, I would always go watch my dad bowl Friday nights and felt like I could never fall asleep because I was just so excited to go bowl on Saturdays. Um, and then bowling started getting more serious and then I joined high school because I was old enough and um and then there was like this time I want to say I started high school and wasn't really into bowling I started playing basketball um and then quickly realized that bowling is my life so I need to commit to bowling because there were times where I was missing practice bowling practice and I was like this just isn't selling with me. Like I feel I need to be there bowling instead of uh, playing basketball. And so um, I shut down that basketball route and just really committed to bowling. Um, my brother, Nick went off to college and I just, I didn't care. Typical teenager at the time. I just didn't care. Um, and Nick was like, yo, like you need, you need to do this college bowling stuff. Like it's, it's fun. Um, you'll love it. And I was like, eh, it's fine. And so um, then I started looking at my grades and I was like, oh, well, I 
not sure if I'm going anywhere because of that. So I just simply just didn't care. And so I visited Midland where Nick went. Um, um, didn't go the way I wanted it. Um, Bull Junior Gold and got a message from Shannon. And ever since Shannon messaged me, it was like a whole like click of fingers and I became serious. Um, I worked on getting my grades better so I could get into McKendry because it is a division two school. So it requires a lot of academic and um, ACT scores and stuff. So I really um, just honed down on school and um, hi, dad. And, <laughs> and um, I, then I, I don't, went to McKendry. <laughs> I, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, you know, you mentioned Nick, and you have uh, another brother, Josh, who yes. is also, you know, an accomplished bowler. Um, mm-hmm. Did you three kind of motivate yourselves? You know, the the boys are doing well, so I've got to do well. Lauren's doing well, so we've got to do better. It, was there that kind of thing going on growing up with you? Um, I don't think so, and I really don't want to say this on live stream, but Nick was actually one of my role models I looked up to growing up as much as we butt heads, he was always someone I looked up to and wanted to be just like him. Um, and when he went off to school, I think that kind of changed things that he wasn't going to be there and that I kind of needed to step up. Um, Josh wasn't really too serious into bowling until actually Sean reached out to Josh and um, noticed Josh. And I think that's what, help Josh go to Whitewater was, you know, someone's noticing me, someone's not noticing my brother or sister. So he went to Whitewater and um, yeah, so we had like the whole Midwest like covered in pates. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, I think once we were all three apart at different schools going through similar but different things, I think that's kind of what um, motivated each other. Specifically for me, I know Josh, I think he was, he did college in five years and COVID unfortunately ruined his graduation year. Hmm. So we were able to throw him a little graduation party type thing, breaking CDC guidelines and that kind of stuff, but <laughs> it's family. So <laughs> yeah, it's our um, little secret. Exactly. It's not a secret anymore, but, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think witnessing him not being able to walk across the stage, I think that gave me motivation for graduate school was, you know, you got to kind of push through that regardless of this pandemic and um, just having, seeing him, he was a little upset, but he wasn't as upset. I mean, I would be devastated if I couldn't walk across the stage, but um, I think that kind of motivated me to really kind of push through with graduate school and just graduate because you know, sometimes people don't always get what they want and uh, other people are fortunate enough to receive and get what they want. So, yeah, uh, I mean, of course, we're dealing with a lot of that in, on all kinds of fronts, you know, since this pandemic started. But, mm-hmm. you know, I guess we all have our own opinions on family matters. So what I did was, you know, in the uh, I guess in the spirit of being unbiased, I went to a paid expert um to uh you know to come up with a pate depth chart and uh you know we didn't talk about this in terms of bowling so i want you to guess um you know how our pate expert sean wachner (laughs) um you know ranked you all the five of you on his depth chart okay well i'm number one (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he actually probably put my mom and then me and then Josh. Nick and then my dad. I mean, okay. All right. That's a good guess. Um, but uh, how it turned out was he said that Josh was the <laughs> best hate followed by you. Unfortunately, he said. Uh, he said, unfortunately, she's the second best pate in her family. I put her twin, Josh, who bowled for me as the best pate. Then there's dad, Mike, mom, Debbie, and then Nick, the PBA member. But that's my pate 
depth chart and he you know follows it up with an lol so uh <laughs> i guess you better you watch out john debbie might get you <laughs> <laughs> um how about the junior program that you grew up in uh, i'm assuming you know growing up in invergrove heights you, you must have been at draculas yep yeah yeah um draculas still i consider my home um if you look on the pwu website that's listed as my home center a lot of history there um we bowled all of our years of junior bowling there heather and um, tim dracula gave so much to um the junior program that there's a lot of um well-known bowlers that came out of invergrove um and it was just there was like three tiers it was bumpers and then prep and then juniors so once you hit a certain age you would just graduate from one side and then go to the other side and you always wanted to be on the low end because that was where the junior league was and where all the older people were and you couldn't get there until you were i want to say like seventh or eighth grade um but yeah Dracula's is, I love that place. Um, it was, correct me if I'm wrong, if you know this fun fact, I'm pretty sure it was one of the places the men's U.S. Open was at. Oh. I don't know if it was one of the first years the U.S. Open was. Um, but yeah, so the men's oh. U.S. Open was there. I can't remember what year. Mom, dad, help me out in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's total news to me. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's some history behind there. And uh, I just love it. They have a great pub. They have just great. It's a great family, great family that owns that business. And um, I always love going back there and saying hi to, yeah, 1961. You, 1961. you weren't even born yet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, you know, it, it has a great family feel and, uh, I'm guessing you probably had some great coaching there. So, um, I was able to get in touch with Gary Salzman, um, who he said, uh, what you were, or you were a junior coach. Uh, he was a junior mm -hmm. coach for you and a high school coach. Um, yeah. he told me that when he started coaching you, you were wild, very boisterous, and he said, you knew she was in the room and you were very <laughs> confident. Where, where does that come from? Um, I think just growing up with boys, I think. Yeah. You know, I have three brothers um, and one sister. And my mom always worked a lot. So it was me, Nick, Josh, and my dad. And I felt like I had to be confident, that confident woman in the house put them in their place. And then we would always, you know, like play fight. And <laughs> I didn't want to be the one that was crying and hurt. So <laughs> I just had to, you know, be that strong uh, female figure um, while my mom was uh, working to provide for us. And um, I think I just carried that over. And I get the loudness from my mom. Um, so <laughs> a lot of people do know when I'm in the room because <laughs> I'm very loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Matt uh, mentioned that the nachos are the best there. I've never oh, tried Dracula's nachos, but uh, they're I'm very good. I'm a fan of nachos in general, so I'm going to have to. Um, Colin uh, wants to let you know that uh, he loves watching you bowl, and let's go, Matt. Hope you get picked for the draft. Um, I'm sure Matt does too. Jen says, love you, Ice Pick. <laughs> Is that your nickname? Yeah, so that's <laughs> that's my nickname in the St. Louis area is Ice Pick. Ah, okay. How, I really, like, don't know. And every time <laughs> I ask them, they're like, oh, yeah, so we were bowling the Missouri Women's State. And some lady, I think, like, three lanes down was like, hey, nice pick. And one of the girls I was bowling with that they said ice pick. Wow. And then we were out doing adulting things. And then all of a sudden it was my nickname. So that's now my nickname. 
Okay. <laughs> that's Fair enough. All they, that's all they say. So. Yeah. Um, you, you know, start progressing and, you know, through this Dracula's program, you end up in, in high school on a team there. Um, you know, Gary told me that when you are focused and have a goal, you're just going to accomplish that goal. There's no way around it. Uh, he remembers that you would call him up and you'd be at Dracula's at 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night practicing because you wanted to work on something. When mm -hmm. you get in that frame of mind that, you know, something needs to be worked on, some change needs to happen in my game, is it a deal where you have to fix it right then and there? Is that what kind of causes something like that? Yes very impulsive. Um, when I have my mindset on something, I don't let go of it until I accomplish it. So whether that's um, bowling, um, whether that's, I don't know, sitting at home, if I have something in my mind, I'm like, I got to do it right now, right now. Um, and I remember always calling Gary. I, I went to school from like 745 to like three every day. And then I would come home and I would go work at a bowling center and till like nine or 10 when leagues got done. And then I would go straight over to Dracula's and just practice until like 11. Mm -hmm. And then I would always dread it the next day. But then I was like, it's so worth it because it'll pay off with me losing sleep and me putting in the time, whether it's 10 o'clock at night, um, it'll pay off. And I think a lot of it paid off um, when I committed to McKendry because um, obviously we went on to win, you know, a couple of national championships and have a lot of, um, TV appearances. Um, it just felt like, you know, all of the days that days and nights that I've spent, um, working and just, you know, embracing the struggle, I think really helped, you know, tune out to what, um, McKendry brought to me. Yeah. Um, you know, Gary remembered that junior gold tournament that you brought up where, you know, where Shannon was looking for you. Um, you know, I asked Shannon about the circumstances behind that, uh, you know, and she said, we recruited her. She's the first student athlete to ever commit to us, meaning her and Brian. Mm -hmm. Um, she says you were really quiet your entire visit. And if you know, Lauren, that's not normal. <laughs> we've, we've kind of hit that point a little bit. Uh, she said we left dinner and as we were driving home, she told her husband, she's not coming. She hated it, but you called her 10 minutes later and committed. And that's when uh, your <laughs> journey really began. What was it, you know, during that visit that, you know, that kind of turned the tide. You mentioned you had looked at Midland and, you mm -hmm. know, we're probably not a hundred percent until you saw something you were looking for, right? Yeah. Um, I think it was just the homey feel. Um, I came from a really small high school. So, I mean, Midland was small. Um, I just felt there was better opportunity out there. And um, when we visited, I think it was just my mom and I, when we visited McKendry, the second I foot, uh, put my foot on campus, I was like, yep, I'm going here. I'm doing it. Um, and we were at dinner that night and um, we were talking and I hadn't gotten accepted into McKendry yet. So it was still, I didn't want to commit if I wasn't able to go there. And um, so I called Nick and I was like, okay. I really have to go here, but like, I don't know. And Nick was like, well, look at Shannon. She's, you know, Team USA, professional athlete. She has a resume. And I think if you want to, you know, be a professional, you have to go somewhere where you can get your academics, but also you can become the bowler that you want to become. And I was like, you're right, which I won't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're right. And so when we left dinner, um, I was so anxious. I was like, mom, I have to call her. Like, I just, I, I have to do it. And so she's like, okay, call Shannon. So we got back to the hotel, which was right across the street from dinner. And Shannon didn't answer the first time. And so I texted her. I was like, Hey, can you and Brian give me a call? And, um, I was shaking 
And I was like, okay, I'm coming to McKendry. And she's like, really? And I was like, yes, I'm coming to McKendry, whether that's this upcoming year or if it's a year from now, I'm, I will be at McKendry. Um, and so everything fell into place and I was actually accepted on December 23rd of 2014. So I remember getting the phone call from Shannon. Shannon was actually the first person to tell me that I was accepted into McKendry. Um, and I was like, sweet, this is so exciting. Um, so just everything, it was just the right timing and, um, it just felt like home to me. And I, I knew that I had to go there because, you know, Shannon and Brian are very loving people and, um, they love deeply. So, um, I just knew that me going nine hours away from home, that this was the place to go because I knew I had, um, Shannon and Brian there for me. Yeah. Uh, looks like Colin and I are on the same same wavelength because I was going to ask you the same thing. Uh, you know, we see Shannon on TV. We've seen her win the tournaments. We've seen her passion when mm -hmm. it comes to coaching. But not many of us know what it's like to have that direct coaching from her. What's it like to, you know, to be on her team, to be coached by her? Um, basically, how she competes is how she coaches. Um, she wants to win. And she will put a team together to win. And um, since her and Brian started, they have built up the name for McKendry in the sport of bowling. Um, there was a time, I want to say, my freshman year to my senior year. And I'm pretty sure up until this year, McKendry had not finished under fourth place in a single tournament um, since my freshman year. I think there was maybe one tournament we finished fifth or sixth, but it was, I think that shows just the kind of coach that Shannon is. Shannon will find the girls that love each other, be there. Um, obviously talent is a factor, but also, you know, we got to put talent aside sometimes and just the connection that you can have with girls um, will show just how good they are. I think um, the team we had from 2016 to 2018, I think was uh, probably one of the strongest teams that college bowling has ever seen. Um, and I'm not saying that because I was on the team, but I'm saying that because like, Five, five all Americans on the team, rookie of the year, player of the year. Like we have, we had a lot of talent on there, but also it was the way we were just inseparable. I don't think that um, there was another team that was like how we are, we were um, when competing. It was always like if you split or if you opened, it was like, nope, smile, please. You know, I got you. Like this is how it's going to be. Um, and we just fully trusted in each other to, you know, really get the job done. And I think 2017 really showed, um, the type of work ethic that the girls had, but also kind of, you know, the coaching that Shannon and Brian had, like we obviously had standards that we had to fulfill. Um, if you want to be one of the best, you have to train like one of the best. And, um, most certainly it was hard at times with academics but um, there was always a way to kind of, you know, balance out these things. And we got it done. And very, it was fun being coached by Shannon. Um, obviously, there was ups and downs with bowling, college bowling. There is with everyone's bowling career. Um, but it was honestly the best four years of my life was just being a part of that team and having Shannon and Brian as coaches. Yeah. You were, you know, a rookie of the year, NTSC, uh, you know, the first year you were there. But mm -hmm. you talked about that chemistry, these, you know, these young ladies from different backgrounds coming together and learning how to win as a team. Did that take time or was that chemistry apparent, like, really quick? Um, it was, I think it was apparent very quickly. Um 
all of us came from different parts of the country. We had one from California, one from Minnesota, one from Chicago, one from Florida, one couple from Texas. So like we weren't, we didn't live within like a close proximity of each other. Like we were significantly far away from each other. Um, and I think we just came in and had the same goals. And I think when you have the same goals that you want to win a national championship, it's going to be hard to be when we're all working on the same page. Um, and it also helped that like five of us <laughs> out of the eight were living with each other. So we were able to kind of build that relationship outside of bowling that um, we were able to carry into bowling. And we, we just all worked together. It, you know, it was a bunch of sisters, obviously a bunch of sisters come together. We're going to butt heads at times, but you know, there was a way we communicated with each other, whether it, we could simply just look at each other and we would know what one was thinking or what we wanted to say. Um, and I think that's what really helped us with, you know, what we did at McKendry. And um, it was, yeah, it was really amazing time. And <laughs> I still don't even have words to describe the four years there, but I, I made some lifelong friends, that's for sure. Yeah. A lot of people look to that 2017 season. You've mentioned it before. Um, you know, Sean said it, it was fun to watch you compete in college as you had a fierceness to you. And that whole McKendry team in 2017 was just dominant. Um, mm -hmm. Does that Did that fierceness come out in you when you were at McKendry or had that been building before then? It had been building, um, I would say it had been building because, you know, you don't truly, I don't want to say you don't truly get the experience of, you know, team bowling um, until college. It's just a different level of team. Um, you're bowling against up and coming possible PWA stars. You're bowling against junior gold winners, um, junior team USA members, like you're bowling against some of the best youth bowlers in the world, because a lot of them came internationally. Um, and I think, um, the way high school went, it kind of just set me up for, um, how college was going to be. And I think the more, um, into college bowling with the more fierce I became because I wanted to win. <laughs> Yeah. And having Shannon and Brian wanting to win also, I think that's what was like, all right, we're going to light a fire on your butt and here we go. We're going to, we're going to dominate college bowling. Yeah. And obviously that worked in that 2017 season, uh, USBC national championship mm -hmm. and NCAA national championship. One of the few teams to do that in the same year, let alone to win a national championship at all. But what did it feel like, you know, first to win that first title and then come back and, and just do it again. I think, I don't know. Like when we were, when we bowled that whole tournament, nothing faced us. Um, I think we lost one match the entire tournament. And that was back when um, NC nationals was top eight and you bowled round Robin and you were ranked based or you were seated based off of your win loss records. Um, so it was long bowling before we actually went into match play. So, um, nothing phased us that week. Um, I didn't bowl the first day, a couple of the other girls didn't bowl the first day, but we had such a dominant team that it didn't matter who was bowling because we were all there and we were all bowling. Like I felt I was bowling with the girls when I didn't bowl the first day. Um, and I think it really helped kind of build that confidence going into match play. Um, and, you know, we won three matches and we were on the TV show and the TV show I think was the fastest, I don't even know, hour and a half of my entire life. Um, and like, there are times where I, I remember in the moment of what it was like to be there, but also like, we were so in sync and we were so focused on what we were doing that 
we didn't even know how many people were in the stadium or who was around us. It was simply just us bowling. Um, and obviously we won and funny story of when we did win, um, when Brianna Clummer was up in the 10th, um, no one knew she needed to strike to win, but me and Shannon Bryan, obviously. <laughs> and when she struck me, Shannon and Brian all ran up to the foul line screaming <laughs> and no one was there. Like there's, there's a picture of me hugging Brie <laughs> and everyone else was standing back there. And I was, and then when the girls finally saw Brian screaming because Brian doesn't show emotion. So when <laughs> he shows emotion, we're doing something. Yeah. And so he was screaming and that's when the girls were like, Oh my God, we just won. And so obviously they all came running up, but, um, it was pretty cool. I think <laughs> my brother always jokes with me about how I ran and got the trophy of, you know, you're, you're supposed to go together as a team. And I was like, no, that's ours. And I'm going to get it to us. So <laughs> I ran and grabbed the trophy as fast as I could to bring to the girls. And it was just a moment that I'll never be able to forget. I, I go through pictures all the time. I see them come up on my memories and I'm like, Oh, that was such a great time and I just loved I wish I could go back to just that whole tournament I think um really helped set McKendry on the map of you know this is McKendry bowling and this is how it's gonna go yeah. um and just going into ITCs that next week we were bowling in the same center so we kind of knew what was gonna work and what wasn't gonna work um, regardless of the pattern, like with USBCs, you can only bring five bowling balls. So it was, you know, everyone's in the same boat. Well, hopefully these are the five lucky balls that were, that are going to win the national championship. And I think that helped us and built confidence for that week. Um, we weren't, we obviously, we, I think we didn't lose any matches, but it came down to game seven of, um, a couple of the matches we were able to come away with the win. And I think just being back on the TV set, um, there was a lot of pressure on us. I would say that there was a lot of pressure. We just won on the same exact pair. Um, and we bowled Weber. So the first five frames, I think, were pretty decent. Um, but I think the final game, game five, I think that is what really <laughs> we were definitely shaken um, game five because – you know, lanes were transitioning. We didn't want to make any major ball changes. And we were just guessing, um, missed a couple of spares. And somehow we were able to walk away with a win with the 150 game. Um, I don't think <laughs> you'll be able to do that now in college bowling. Um, but I think it was just the luck of the draw. And it was just meant for us to win both yeah. times in that center. Yeah. You mentioned uh, living with four or five of the other mm -hmm. young ladies on the team. Was there one teammate that maybe you were closest with one or two or even three? Yeah. She's now my maid of honor in my wedding. Um, Ashley Hathaway. She, we grew close because, um, you know, she, we both moved far away from our homes. Um, we we're both obviously growing as people. Um, experiencing loss, you know, that kind of, um, things that people go through. Um, and I think we just really built a connection and a relationship to, we just became friends, best friends. And, um, we knew how we communicated with each other. And, um, she was a really big part of the backbone that McKendry, um, the team needed. Um, she was more of, you know, like the caretaker of the girls. Um, she was a really part, a big part of um, calming Brianna down when she would go up in the 10th frame, fifth and 10th frame. Every time she threw a shot, Ashley was always there, you know, kind of calming her down, giving her a little pep talk. Um, and she was just an overall great teammate and great friend now. Yeah. So you make your way through that four year period. I'm sure it goes fast. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, I bowled, you know, three years, you know, in college and 
that went by really fast. But um, when it was over, uh, I guess, did you, you know, did you have a second to kind of, you know, exhale, look back and kind of reflect on what a career you had? I mean, you know, three All-American, three-time All-American, the national championships, all the other accolades? Uh, not really, because I went straight into tour. Okay. So it was... I feel like I can look back now and be like, wow, I, I really did that. Um, and I think in moments where I feel defeated and feel not confident in my game, I'm like, what am I even doing? I think those are the times where I can look back and be like, yo, like you, you got stuff on your resume. Don't worry. Oh, yeah. Like my time is coming when I win my first time, you know, my, it's all about the timing and um, it's all part of the plan. I, I think um, last year was a struggle this year. I'm going in with a new mindset. Um, like I said earlier, a clear mind. I don't have anything I have to think about, uh, worry about any kind of that stuff. I think um, has definitely built confidence in me that I can be myself while competing and just, be able to work through it and not be able to go back to the hotel room and do homework or, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited. Really excited. I bet. Was that an automatic right after school? I am going to go on the PWBA tour. Did it take any thought or was it just, this is what I'm going to do? Which time after graduating undergrad or after your undergrad? Yeah. Yeah. I had just, um, the second I got done bowling at ITCs when we placed second against Robert Morris, I was on the phone with a couple of sponsors. So mm-hmm. it was immediate. I was like, I'm going on the tour um, and I'm going to bowl until s- school starts in the fall. And yeah, I had my mind pretty much set on bowling the tour um, <laughs> well before my senior year. Yeah. That's just, I just had to find you know, the kind of courage and confidence that that's what I wanted to do because, you know, you don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So it's like, do I really want to go on tour? Like, let's just, you know, play it out. But no, I think once um, January of 2019 hit, I was like, yep, I'm going on tour. There's yeah. no if, ands, or buts about it. I'm going out there and we'll see what happens. Sure. You've also uh, done three years of Team USA. And, uh, you know, Gary said, uh, you know, that he thinks that was one of your bigger goals as a youth bowler was mm-hmm. just that you wanted to make Team USA. Yeah. Why, why did you know that, you know, that was so important to you back then? And then what did it feel like to make it happen and then make it happen again and again? Yeah. Um, when I made junior team, I was selected. So um, obviously that meant a lot. I bowled my butt off. So <laughs> I knew I deserved a spot on that team. Um, <clears throat> and same with 20, yeah, 2020. Um, I think just that whole, whole week, I just felt like, you know, it's just meant to be, you know, bowled well the entire week, um, finished in the top four. So I earned my spot on, uh, adult team. You know, I got engaged that week. Um, the Vikings won that week, <laughs> later on lost the next week. But it was just the way that that whole week panned out. I was like, yep, I, earn, I earned, and I put that in bolds, I earned my spot on that team. And then COVID happened, and I was like, oh, great. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be able to be put on 2020's team. And um, that was a year – interesting year. Um, bowling wise, I just did not feel comfortable, especially on tour. And I just, I couldn't find the confidence that I deserve to be out there. And I was like, there's, what am I even doing out here? Why don't I just go home and work, um, and start my career elsewhere. And when I got a phone call that I was selected to go to Columbia, um, in October, um, I was like, okay, Okay, let me take that back real quick. Um, And then, um, 
we got down to Columbia. It was my birthday and I felt like I proved to myself that I do deserve to be on the professional tour and I do deserve to be on Team USA. And um, earning that gold medal on my 25th birthday obviously is a memory or a moment that I won't ever forget and probably cherish for the rest of my life. Um, but it was a moment of, you know what, this USA belongs on my back and I'm going to do everything that I can to have those three letters on my back because those three letters mean the most to me. Um, and I was just actually talking to Matt, um, I want to say a couple of days ago about, um, team USA. And I said, there's one thing in this world that I won't ever be able to give up. And I think that's team USA. And, with a job lined up in the, <clears throat> in the fall, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to give up Team USA. Hmm. I said, I, I can put, you know, the PWB tour, um, on the side for now to be able to, you know, start a family, to be able to, you know, start my career of what I earned my degrees in. And, um, but I know Team USA is not something that I won't ever be able to give up until, I get old and have to retire. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've, you know, I wanted to mention a couple of comments. I saw Rocky Harrison uh, from the Milwaukee area says, good evening. Good evening, Rocky. Thanks for joining us live. Uh, Brent is in the chat. He says, good seeing you. After you put the tiara on in Addison, come <laughs> throw a few practice games and we'll see you soon. He is always proud of you. Thanks, Brent. Yeah, I will definitely be coming to practice next week because I'm going straight to Minnesota after the Queen. So I'll be able to kind of get a few practice games in at the center that we'll be bowling at. Um, very lucky and fortunate enough to be able to do that because of Brent. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to see you. And thank you again for being able to host the PWBA because without you or any of the sponsors and the hosts, we wouldn't be able to do what we do and live out our dreams. Yeah. An incredible event for sure. Um, when, uh, when I was trading messages with Shannon, I asked her how, uh, you know, she thinks you've grown your game or, you know, how your game has evolved, you know, since college. And uh, what she told me is uh, that you've grown so much and that your shot repeatability is a thing of beauty. Um, she says she's so proud of you and who you've become as a person and that you will do amazing things in this life and that she can't wait to watch. Um, that's interesting to me because, as we all know, not only was she your coach, she's your competition now, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Yes, she is. Um, but I, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we're all friends on the tour, um, but when it comes time to work, you know, you're my enemy. <laughs> but when we're done bowling, I will love you and I will be there for you and I will support you. I'll even drive five hours to watch you on a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think, you know, some of my best friends are out there bowling alongside me. And it is so hard not to, like, help them in times of where they're struggling because that's just the type of person I am. If I, if I see something and I notice something, I'm going to help them. And um, I think a lot of the that comes from, you know, growing up with Shannon and just having that um, coach there that will always um, help you and support you. Um, even if we are competitors, she's She'll always be the first one to hug you and say, I love you. Um, when you accomplish one of your goals, um, she's always talked about how she can't wait for one of her girls to win their first tour title against her. Um, so it's coming. So <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And but a lot I of that comes to say, I, I, I think you yeah. saw a little of that on the TV show this weekend yeah. when, you know, when she lost that match to Stephanie. Yes, absolutely. And um, when the TVs weren't airing, um, you know, Shannon and Stephanie were talking, they were hugging and, you know, just saying, you know, whatever happens, happens. And um, I don't know if the TV showed it or not, because obviously it was there. So I don't know when they stopped airing. 
But um, one of the first things out of Stephanie and Shannon's mouth was when Shannon lost was, you know, I love you. And I, I saw it. So it's like, at the end of the day, we love each other. We support each other. You know, a lot of the bullers out there have their best friends out there with them. But when it comes down to competing, it's, it's work. And um, I'm going to do what I have to do to work. Um, so, yeah, that's. Yeah. How does Matt fit into all that? I mean, when you have a couple where both, uh, you know, SIG others are competitive bowlers, that can go one of several ways. I mean, I've talked to folks who, you know, who SIG other and SIG other want to be left alone. And I've mm -hmm. talked to others where they're constantly helping each other and, uh, you know, cheering each other on and all that stuff. Where, where do you guys fit on that spectrum? Um, I would say right in between. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we can't bowl together. Let's just say that. We, no, 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 that's, that's off limits. Um, hence why I don't bowl the Lucy with him. Um, it just, it, it, my, the way I think is completely different than the way he thinks. Um, and I think the first year on tour, Matt, we did travel together to every set we drove everywhere um so having him there obviously was very nice um is he the first person i go to if i'm struggling probably not no offense matt you can probably hear me anyways um <laughs> but <laughs> again the way he he sees sees things um is hard for me to understand so i I don't want to say go to the more experienced, but I go to obviously my ball reps um, who have um, a way of explaining things for me to understand. Um, and I think, I think he's just a good cheerleader, <laughs> but like, I don't know how to word it. Like he's obviously he's there when I need it. Um, I'm there when he needs it. Um, but I think with him bowling the men's tour and me bowling the women's tour, I think women's bowling is completely different than men's bowling. And again, it goes back to what he sees versus what I see. And we just kind of see the lane differently, but you know, we're always there supporting each other. Um, when he was on tour, I was here um, texting him, you know, telling him good luck and just kind of um, talking him through some things that he um, may not have seen and something that I could have, you know, possibly seen on, uh, you know, the live stream and just that kind of stuff. I will say I get one good credit and he could probably say this too. I think it was, I don't know if it was the world series. It was a tournament and he was obviously throwing urethane and all of his urethanes were doing the same thing. And I was like, dude, you need to drill like a two inch purple hammer. And he's like, Okay. And I was like, just put a crazy lay on it because you, you never know. And so he drove the two inch purple hammer and, um, I want to say, you know, making the cut or doing something cool. Okay. Um, so I, there are some things that he hears me out on, but I think he probably feels a lot of the same way of what I see isn't lined up to what he sees just because women's bowling is so much different than men's bowling in terms of like moves. Like our moves are like, two and one theirs are like eight and five that kind of stuff so it was just, if, if we're moving eight and five on the women's tour there's something completely wrong so he's he's more than just the ball drill guy though right <laughs> <laughs> i think so <laughs> he does drill all of my bowling balls so that oh, there you I'm, go i'm grateful for that um yeah. i get uh, layouts for my ball reps and I tell him and I critique his job if it doesn't feel right. Um, but yeah, he just, he's just a 300 ball in Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> I know he did something with it. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, you know, back to Gary, he said that he's had the pleasure of coaching many talented players and uh, his uh, youngest daughter is a junior in high school now. Mm -hmm. Um, he said that he notices these little things that you see in her, 
uh, because he's seen them in you. Mm -hmm. And she got to watch you as you were coming up through the ranks. Um, you know, he said there's times when it, you're where it's like you're just a spitting image of Lauren determined and you're going to make your dreams come true because <laughs> that's how you were to, uh, you know, to have that kind of impact on on younger players has got to be pretty special. Right. Absolutely. And I think that's what makes bowling, you know, worth it, especially through the struggles is these struggles are impacting somebody um, positively and knowing that obviously is reassuring and validating, you know, how I feel. And I just have to keep doing what I'm doing um, and just being, um, you know, Lauren Pate, because there's people out there watching, regardless if it's little girls, little boys, it could be an elder man or elder woman who, um, are trying to find motivation to do anything in life. And I think, um, just being able to hear that it's, it's good. It, it definitely feels good and, um, it makes it all worth it in the end. Yeah. Um, I, uh, told you before we went on air, uh, we do a thing called off the sheet where I ask you to challenge somebody else to appear on a future episode of the show and you can throw talent out the window. We just look for people who are, you know, passionate about the sport, have a unique story to tell as we all do. Um, so Lauren Pate, who would you like to challenge to be on a future episode of Bowling with the Fev? Um, I have two people. I know I wanted one. You, Obviously, one. You can, you can go off the sheet with a double. It starts with a double, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, one is Matt. I think um, the people that he grew up with. I think a lot of people don't know um, who he grew up around: Parker Bowen, Johnny Petraglia, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff. That kind of people. <laughs> um, I think has really shaped him into the bowler he is now. He literally sits and watch watches Parker Bone for like hours upon hours. Um and he's done that since he was a little kid. So I definitely think that him being on the show. I also think Taylor Bailey would be a good one to be on the show. Um just because obviously our approaches are different in bowling and I think um seeing those different perspectives is helpful in bowling because Bowling isn't just like kind of like a one lane thing. There's different lanes out there um, in the way people see the game, view the game, um, play the game, I think um, is eye opening because I think a lot of the some some people think that it's like, oh, um, we all think the same. We all do the same thing, but like we don't. And I think that's something that I'm learning Um while bowling is not everyone thinks the same way I think and pushes me to be more understanding and to listen more because, um, you know, one, one wrong thing could be really wrong in bowling. Uh, it's again, it's a guessing game. So you have to have good guesses. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Colin's on the same wavelength. He's th he thinks Matt should. So, uh, you know, so do you're it, there, Matt. But... Uh, yeah, Matt, I know you can hear me. And uh, and Taylor, if you get to see this or if you're watching live, uh, feel free to reach out. You can find me on Facebook or email bowlingwiththefef at yahoo.com. We would be happy uh, to get you on the schedule. Um, now, as I said, uh, we don't have a show next week as I'll be kind of uh, putting some things together uh, for the Twin Cities Open. The week after that, Tuesday, May 31st, uh, 6 p.m. Central, we've got Milwaukee area usbc hall of famer bruce torbeck coming on uh so definitely interested to hear what he has to say about his career and uh his time uh, bowling in the milwaukee area and beyond uh, again that's may 31st uh coming up here uh lauren it has been a pleasure thank you so much uh for coming on um in between all these long massive drives that you're doing and mm -hmm. uh you know best of luck uh starting with the practice session tomorrow at the queens and beyond and uh yeah hope to meet you in person at uh, at egan awesome i will be in minnesota don't worry awesome. i would look forward to meeting with you thank you so much for having me um on the show it was definitely so fun and i love telling my story 
Um, so hopefully Matt gets on the show in a couple weeks and yeah. <laughs> No, and, and we love hearing it. Thank you so much. And thank all of you for uh, for coming on live. Uh, until next time, be just and fear not and have a great evening.